I would want to really be able to do is to make my diver the diversity of my culture and my country to reach the maximum of people and be international because my culture is so rich and it deserves to be international and deserves to uh, uplevel my economy through it. So basically that was like my vision and uh, the integration of each ethnicity and background and religion and every culture for me is very important. So what do you think of this, guys? What is your vision of your own culture and how you envision the diversity of your cultures? And is it like a core value of it or uh, um, you belong to the same community? So who wants to start? The person who would want to talk, please and to answer the questions, you turn on your microphones. So I can know that it's you. I have a question. I was once working in uh, uh, Tunisia and uh, mm -hmm. they, um, as far as I know, they are like Berbers and they are uh, saying that uh, like historically it's a mixture of like seven different uh, like nationalities or something like that. Uh, does that also apply for uh, like Algeria, Morocco, maybe some other countries that are adjacent to to uh, Tunisia, I mean, in this area, in this region of Africa. Uh, the region of North Africa is very diverse. It had been through lots of marriage of cultures before. And I always say that the multiculturalism of the past is the diversity of today. Because yesterday we were we were like multicultural. There were marriage between the Algerian culture and the Turkish culture, between uh, the North African culture globally, and then between, uh, you know, Algeria was colonized by France. So there were also a certain marriage of culture at that period of time. And moving through time, we had reached the diversity of today. So today in Algeria, we are so many ethnicities. It holds a very, very diverse uh, social class, just like Tunisia and maybe probably more. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so who wants to talk? Okay, so I'll start from... There. Um, the yeah 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 go ahead sorry <laughs> i interrupted no it's okay yeah you can answer the question please well yeah yeah your question was actually very very interesting and even the topic like it's it's the topic itself is very interesting because it actually combines the diversity and then the culture which is very interesting like increasingly interesting so um as you said when we refer to diversity, like diversity, when we see it from, from a demographic point of view, like factors, we've got demographic factors, like when we talk about age, gender, etc., as we see in Algeria. And then when we talk about other spiritual factors, like religion, and, and that, that, that will make uh, the place one place uh, uh, has like the cultural diversity, which is the case in Algeria, because some other countries, as you mentioned, uh, uh, your experience in Russia, the, the guy thought that you're Arab, just he assumed that you're Arab just because you're from Algeria, because as you said, our culture is not promoted uh, abroad. So uh, there are some countries that are actually uh, monocultural, like like for example Poland and, and and Switzerland. I think I'm not so sure about Switzerland, but they they, they don't have like the, this cultural diversity. But in our case, uh, it's it's very common to see like different uh, different uh, cultural uh, differences in in here. So your question basically was uh, let me remember exact the exact question. How do you envision uh, the diversity of your culture? And is it a yes. value of your culture? Well, yeah, uh, to answer this question, as I said, uh, Algeria, Algeria has like a cultural diversity, which is, as you said, not promoted at all. Like uh, the, the, the wrong thing about uh, the, the, the vision of other people about our country is that they, they have like some wrong assumptions about it. So they basically, they basically think that we're all Arab just because, uh, uh, just because the national language of our country is Arab, which is 
which is not the case in Algeria because uh, in, in our history, I believe in my point of view in our history, uh, uh, it's it's not based on Arabs. Like it's been it's been very different, like Berbers, as he said. So yeah. yeah. Yes, I mean this is one of the stereotypes that we have in our country. Like we mm -hmm. have many stereotypes which are wrong, where people I think so. uh, that like uh, yeah, like think that all people who live in uh, Algeria are black, and they think that it's very hot here and we, like the territory is all desert yeah there are some stereotype about uh, exactly. our country yeah so mm -hmm. yeah we, which is not like not correct for 100 percent since we have different uh, colors in here and uh, people from different background not only arab and not only amazigh also other uh, exactly. uh, ethnics yeah. In Algeria yeah so this is this is very good to introduce the country to promote the the culture so to be uh, exactly. like to clarify the idea for yes I believe so and and the irony is actually uh, even in in one country even in Algeria itself there are people that do not know about other cultures in the same country so um, I am I am originally from the Sahara the Algerian desert Mm -hmm. And it's very funny when I meet people for the first time and you're like, oh, you're not black. No, I, I'm not supposed to be black to be from there. So it's very, it's very like hilarious, actually. Sometimes, it, it, yeah. So uh, it's not just promoted. As Sarah said, the problem is not just the, the, the uh, promoted internationally, but even nationally, it's not promoted. Like we don't, we don't know much about our own country. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. So, who yeah. wants to answer the question next? Sergi. Yeah, I'd like to say a few words. Like, I have actually a lot of thoughts. I will try to make it very fast. So, um, yeah, I think the today's um, one point is laziness of uh, people. Despite we have so many technologies, we watch only some crappy dramas or something like that, you know. We don't fully use these technologies to widen our horizons. To get mm -hmm. to know other people and talking about Africa since um, as you know I'm from a lot of public and every day we talk with uh, a lot lots of people from I don't know from South uh, Africa from Uganda from Nigeria from uh, like Algiers Morocco you name it like from different parts of Africa and it's so interesting to find out about people and uh, what Yasmin was saying about skin color, um, actually my previous boss, I was working in the uh, wo like world's largest theme park and he's South African. And uh, talking about skin color, uh, he, he, he has light skin color. So also like uh, uh, for, for those people who, who don't know this, you know, peculiarities of different uh, countries, like every guy doesn't mean always like people with dark skin. So I think today we have perfect opportunities. And when I hear about diversity, um, uh, maybe it will, be, it, will, it will sound a little bit uh, religious, but uh, th since it's also Aid right now, Allah created uh, like uh, different people, right? Uh, different I don't know, nationalities, different views, different uh, forms of our bodies. But eventually, like Yasmin was saying inside, we have the same uh, spirit of Allah. And uh, this is what <laughs> unites all people. And um, I started already preparing for our also tomorrow's conversation. And I was searching in uh, Google for Algier, because um, uh, Algeria, I was uh, not very familiar also with the country. And there is one guy, um, I think he's from Great Britain. He has such an amazing videos on YouTube. Um, mm -hmm. Like he's exploring Algeria, just walking uh, the streets, and uh, he was showing like a, a huge park. It's like a forest in the middle of the city, and uh, you know he's making the videos very uh, um, like you know you can shoot a, a video just for shooting for the sake of shooting, and uh, mm -hmm. sometimes if you have this. Uh, passion for like um, artistic passion 
uh, you always mm -hmm. try to make it with some interesting angles and but but the most interesting part was that he managed to pass this uh, authenticity you know this uh, spirit of the country and uh, he was communicating a lot with different people that's what i liked uh, the most that it's not just a, you know sightseeing and going to the tourist buses but actually talking to people and from my experience also in uh, tunisia and uh, alhamdulillah right now it's almost eight years in dubai I get to communicate with so many different nationalities. It's uh, India, Pakistan, um, Philippines, uh, I don't know, Indonesia, Thailand. <laughs> right now we have so many also nationalities online. And uh, what Sarah started the topic is diversity. Actually, this is our strength of today's humanity. This, this is not the difference between us. But this is our strength because actually, if we we united together as one family, this mm -hmm. world will definitely change. <laughs> That's what diversity comes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sergi. Uh, I actually am really interested in your point of view about meeting different people and just getting to know like their cultures and etc. So, uh, but you did not talk about your country more specifically, your country of origin. Is it diverse? What do you think of its culture? Like, is diversity one of your core values? Yeah, originally I'm from Ukraine. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Ukraine is not different from other countries of the world. We have so many students from, uh, from China, from... Uh, uh, European countries, from um, Eastern countries, uh, from Arabic-speaking countries. So, also any university you go to, let's say in Ukraine, or if you just walk around the capital city, basically you will meet half uh, of the <laughs> nationalities of the world as well. Especially right now, when uh, it's like you know, thanks to technologies and thanks to the to, to the fact that people get um, to travel, you know, not not like before, like I said, with tourist buses and so on and so forth, people uh, started being curious. They are uh, going off the like uh, beaten uh, tourist routes and they tr try to explore on their own, try to take public transportation, try to get from one point to another, like, you know, to try to feel, you know, um, themselves as a citizen of the country you know and i think that's that's amazing so in in ukraine um and the people are also very you know uh, heart welcoming and uh, if uh, even especially if you, if you had some experience in russia you know that if you go to someone's house <laughs> they will put everything they have on the table and <laughs> you cannot just uh, you know come there for 15 minutes and go. No, it's like a lot of communication, talking, sharing, like experiences. So it's, that's what we actually have in common uh, between uh, even uh, Arab countries. So as far as I know, also it's very like, uh, I know food and uh, different traditions, what you're doing together. And especially if you're invited to someone's house, mm -hmm. this is already a great uh, gesture of uh, you know, trust and almost like you're part of a family. So we have a lot of in common, actually. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sergey. Uh, who would like to interact with us? I got Luna. Could you please, Luna, answer my question about Taiwan? Hi, Luna. How are hi, you? Hi, hi, hi. I'm from Taiwan. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can I you can hear me? You. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm, I'm from Taiwan. Actually, in Taiwan now, we. Our culture is getting more diverse because we have so many people from Asia working for coming and working and sometimes they marry our guys and so that's right now um, something very interesting is even at school we teach students the those immigrants mother language so we we teach them as a mother language not just uh, like a foreign language so it's kind of very interesting it's it's um like right now at our school we have Vietnam people uh, i mean we have young kids learning vietnam 
Vietnamese and Thai, Cambodian, Indonesian. Uh, ho, ho, I mean, even a school student has so many op options to learn languages and it's kind of interesting. And in terms of religions, I think Taiwan is the most kind of Maori religious. I mean, we can, we have people believing Catholic and Christians, Buddhism, Taoism, and we even establish many prayer room for Muslims. So we are kind of religious, very friendly country. And in terms of our history, we are very, a very interesting culture. I mean, a very interesting country. country. I mean, we were colonized by Spain, by Netherlands, by Japan, and, and even we have so many immigrants from China. So right now, um, we have kind of, you know, um, mixed with men, a lot of cultures and pretty much fun. And also, since we are kind of more developed now, so we have a lot of tourism tourists coming over, I mean, before the pandemic. <laughs> and sometimes when I go to Taipei, I thought that I was in a foreign country, especially in Taipei 101. I can, sometimes I see someone and like, uh, like look like in Asia, I speak to them in Chinese, but they couldn't understand it. So I have to speak English. So sometimes I think that's kind of fun. I mean, being in a big city and we can meet so many people from different places. For example, right now in our Taipei station, a lot of Muslim was gathering around there and celebrating their kind of any some kind of mubash. Something was kind of, well, very interesting. I and mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we kind of enjoy this multicultural and we really, we are very, we really welcome all foreigners to visit us and to enjoy our cultural celebration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luna. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll move to another person. Hi, Husam. Uh, hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Husam. Actually, I'm Syrian, uh, but working in Saudi Arabia. So I don't know, you want me to speak about the diversity uh, either in Syria or in Saudi Arabia? Uh, you can speak about Syria and then give us your vision of diversity in general because you have experience of both. Yeah, actually in Syria there are uh, many cultures there, uh, many religious uh, in Syria. So everything uh, I know before the war is uh, was fine and everything is okay in Syria. But something uh, happened later due to political issues. Uh, about diversity, we have a lot, many religions, uh, many people of different uh, religions and all love everybody and we don't have any issue. Uh, this about Syria, just an abbreviation. Uh, Saudi Arabia here, there are many, uh, uh, many people from many cultures, from many countries. You know, all Gulf countries, as uh, uh, speak before me, Sergi, that uh, all Gulf countries, they have uh, different uh, people from different countries. So there's a lot of diversity here. Uh, but uh, this diversity is not impacted or affected in the society here, I think, because uh, everybody is busy in his work. And it's here, uh, uh, the world here is like, uh, you are working only, and not that uh, I mean about diversity. There is nothing uh, impacted uh, uh, for this one. I think in other side, on the other side, maybe we can speak about, if you want to talk about diversity and cultures and how it's affected in the society or community, maybe we can speak about uh, Canada or Australia, I think, because a lot of uh, migrants, uh, migrants uh, living there and going there, so I think uh, we can see the soul of diversity there, maybe, my opinion. I heard also about uh, the, my co uh, the colleagues here, they're talking about Algeria and many also uh, types of people or types of uh, culture. So uh, it depends in each country, but uh, just I'm saying my opinion about uh, country where uh, I lived earlier and now I'm here in Saudi Arabia since long time. And about my expert outside of Saudi Arabia. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hassan. It was really interesting. Thank you. So we're going to move to the next one. I got um, Virgie from India. Yeah, hello. Hi, Virgie. How are you? Well, first of all, happy Eid, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm from India. Uh, I'm from Kanyakumari. I hope you everybody knows it's the last part of India. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Virgin India is very diverse. So, how do you envision this diversity of, of India? Like, I've been hearing uh, like example of, about the diversity of, of the country that you have many like Tamils, you have Punjab, you have you even have uh, like Muslims, Muslim community. You have so many ethnicities and so many uh, religions. So tell us a bit about this and what is your vision of it? Actually, I'm very proud to be in India because we are the land of diversity. We speak around 22 languages mm -hmm. and around nine, more than nine religions and mm -hmm. around more than 25,000 castes in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, about India in diversity, we face lots of discrimination when it comes to diversity. Mm -hmm. Uh, my previous person, I think Sergi from Dubai, he said diversity is an advantage. While in India, it's considered as a big disadvantage because so much diversity is causing discrimination rather than giving advantage to poor people. It's causing so much discrimination. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my point of view in diversity. We don't consider it as an advantage. We consider it as a mm -hmm. disadvantage for a normal citizen in India. So thank you. But do you think that diversity as a core value, as a concept, as an, an approach, and as a way, lifestyle of a country, of an entire nation, is a disadvantage in generally sorry? speak? Sorry, generally sorry. Speaking? Sorry. Do you think that diversity as a concept, as like a general idea, as an approach uh, for, for a nation is a disadvantage? disadvantage for that nation maybe yeah obviously yeah absolutely i consider this as a disadvantage because when it comes to skin color yeah, my previous person also told that that skin color is shown as a diversity while consider while you see in america it's a racism it comes under racism mm -hmm. so i consider this as an this advantage, yeah, obviously, yeah. Could I say um, something as well? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah I want to add just only. <clears> you know, hi, thank you, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here this morning. It's uh, morning time right now, and the US and you know I wanted to talk about diversity it's a um, very interesting topic actually and in here in the US we have a lot of people that are from different countries and from different nations that come together and uh, in my opinion you know diversity is something that we should embrace it is a very important thing that we have it's actually amazing that we have so many cultures and so many traditions that we can all celebrate. Mm -hmm. If we embrace this diversity and we all unite together and join together, imagine how many more holidays we'll have. Imagine how much more we can learn from each other. It is constant. The history of each country is so rich and it's so incredible to learn that history. It is incredible, incredible that we can teach our kids this history. And actually, I wanted to say that we're the people that made, uh, <clears throat> first, I want to agree with Sergi, and I think everybody here will agree that we're all the same. doesn't matter what color skin we are. It doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter, you know, what kind of clothes we wear. None of those things matter. As long as we all respect each other, as long as we're all, you know, understand the internal human values that we all have are, you know, we all human beings that are trying to help each other, we all want to love each other, then it doesn't matter, we can make this diversity something that can unite us all together, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. we could say it could be unity in diversity. And we see it a lot here. I actually live in a neighborhood that has a lot of people uh, joining from, uh, that we have people here living from many, many various countries, um, from China, from India, from Taiwan, mm -hmm. 
um, we have a very big Arabic population here, which is amazing. And I work with a lot of Arabic people at my job. And it's so great to just hear about their traditions. We always talk about their culture. We try each other's foods. We get to just enjoy. And it's so amazing to see uh, all that and to grow all together because truly all together we can um, unite into one big family and to embrace each other's traditions. So I honestly think that diversity is good, that we can work with it, but I think what needs to happen is people themselves need to grow internally. We all need to understand that we are people and we need to accept each other for who we are. Otherwise, it doesn't matter where you're from, what country you're from. If you don't accept yourself and you don't understand internally that you're a human, then there is no way that we can all unite together. I hope that made sense. And I'm so happy to be here today with everybody. Thank you for inviting me. And this is a really great initiative. Thank you, so much. Thank you, Olga. It's a great what you said because you know I always say that every person's uniqueness, our uniqueness as human beings, lives in our diversity. Like we may be all different, what the common thing is that we are all diverse. Is that we are all different, you know? So, uh, who would want to talk, please? Can I just yeah. just one one uh, small thing? Yeah, for sure. when, yeah. when we talk about um, wars or discrimination or racism. Who is doing it? <laughs> Me and you, we are doing it in our heads or it's just exactly. enough, you know, to accept the thought that the person is not uh, good enough as you or, you know, this uh, This all comes from Shaitan, really. <laughs> he just whispers us different crap and we listen to it and because of it we have wars, we have fights, even in our rooms and our families we have quarrels. Why do we have quarrels with those people who we love, you know? And uh, you know, guys, um, uh, <laughs> no, li listen to this, it's very interesting. I'm Ukrainian, living in Dubai, mm -hmm. with people from uh, Kerala, uh, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. Uh, I'm using laptop made in USA and uh, <laughs> programs uh, installed on it made in USA. I'm mm -hmm. talking to you people from all over the globe. I'm sitting on a bed sheet made, uh, I don't know, maybe in India or in Pakistan. And um, guys in, uh, in, uh, from Kerala today cooked uh, so many delicious foods. I wish I could send to you it by SMS or something like that. <laughs> uh, if modern technologies would allow. So really, uh, everyone has their own point of view. It's absolute mm -hmm. right of everyone. But uh, if we just look around us, you know, uh, what surrounds us, uh, people, you know, different yeah. uh, things that are made from all over the globe, <laughs> you know, from China, from USA, from everywhere, from India. Mm -hmm. We are already living in a diverse world. So, you know, it, it would be mm -hmm. really difficult to find a spot somewhere where you will be alone yeah. in, the, in the woods or something. So I think it's a great yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Sergi, for innovation, intervention. Uh, we'll move to the next person. So I got Priscilla Okran. Hi, Priscilla. Priscilla, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. Priscilla. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, Hello. Hear yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I joined a little, quite a little. So I, from the contribution for my police, I think you are talking about how diverse culture is in my country, right? Uh, we are speaking about each and every one viewpoint of diversity in their culture. And is it like a core value of your culture? Okay. Okay. I'm in Ghana. I'm from, I'm from Ghana and I live in Ghana. And Ghana is found in the West Africa. We are about um, 33 million people with, uh, we have, it was initially called the Gold Coast, but after our independence on the 6th March 1957, it was changed from Gold Coast to Ghana. I hope you've heard a, a lot about the slave trade and all that, which is more peculiar to Ghana. And you can see from my picture, um, those who can see me uh, from my picture, you see behind the picture, you see this building painted white. Yeah, that yeah. is one of the castles that was used 
So over 400 years ago during the slave trade in Ghana to ship people from Africa to Europe. Okay, we have um, about six major ethnic groups in Ghana, um, which breaks down to about 60 um, smaller ones. But the major ones are the Akan, the Elwe, the Da Adangwe. We have over 52 separate languages. But what unique, uh, what unites us most is the English language, which is the our official language. And so, with this um, six different groups, uh, we have I mentioned earlier we have the Akan, the Ewe. For me, I'm um, I'm an Akan. The Akan is the largest, um, the largest group, and the culture among each of these ethnic groups is very different and very diverse and you normally see much display of culture, rich culture during festivals. That's when each tribal group has a, a festival or something. And uh, what else about, what else would you want to know about Ghana? Whatever you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for religion, uh, we have a lot of religion here, but the major ones are the Christian and the Muslim group. How do you live yes. together? Like, how do you communicate with each other? How do you accept all this diversity? Oh, okay, um, for Ghana, we are very united and we display much during our festivals, during our, um, yeah, we like more public gatherings weddings, funerals, like during those times, we really don't joke with such gardens. We take public gardens very seriously. And, that, and that's the time you get to meet people from diverse culture. But aside that, um, it's hardly to meet other people unless you attend gardens, public gardens, such as festivals and funerals, weddings and, and the like. Yeah. That's all I'll see for now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we'll you're welcome. The, yeah, we'll move to the next person. We got here, Alex. Hi, Alex. Alex, can you hear me? I think Alex can't hear me. Yeah. If, if, if you want to talk, just unmute your mic. Maybe he is trying to unmute his mic. Okay. okay. Okay, do you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes, good, good day. Uh, Hello. This is my great pleasure uh, to, to, to be part of this meeting today for the first time. Mm -hmm. I'm Alexander Grozdanowski, and I'm from Croatia, from uh, the European Union. Uh, about uh, this team, what you talked about uh, today, about the, the diversity of uh, between culture and nations and people and religions. Mm -hmm. What is just my short experience? Uh, what can I say? Uh, this is very important moment because today actually whole world started to be like small village. Uh, and uh, between nations and religions and people, what is just my experience and for example one very clever and good man but uh, na with name of Bata he was uh, he was uh, uh, owner of one manufacturer producer uh, a factory for shoes mm -hmm. he he saw because heterogenic uh, uh, culture and, and city or factory have much more better producer moment than homogenic uh, structure. From that side, he saw, and also what is example for big uh, quality companies in the world now and something, uh, between uh, nations and people and uh, with uh, different religions, in the end, when they're working together, they, they pollute a much better result what they're coming from homogenic structure. From that side, uh, I support it with all my heart and all my spirit, diversity 
what is very important in any country and uh, what is apple for uh, 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 dialogue and, and, and responsibility between all uh, uh, leaders and politicians who follow in your self countries and also what is the moment about the respect any minor minority in country because all these people actually doing well uh, well job and supporting country when they live and from that side uh, uh, this is just my short uh, opinion about that uh, now we have a moment about the pandemic disease and something but uh, we, we will regulate it uh, moment in the world just all together mm -hmm. this is just my short opinion thank you so much Alex. thank you so thank much you. i i'm enjoying thank today thank you thank you we'll move to the next person i got a name here in russian i don't i don't speak russian could you please turn on your microphone hi my name is lana sorry i'm for the first time here and i would better <clears throat> listen to you <laughs> well uh, my name is Svetlana. Uh -huh. So how do you envision diversity of your culture and diversity in general, Lana? Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, but I have just entered your uh, well conference and uh, honestly, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, diversity mean what? Diversity in culture or what? And uh, mainly diversity and culture, like different uh, people, different ethnicities, and living under the same, I would say, the same legislation, the same borders, uh, as a nation together in one country. Mm -hmm. Oh well, uh, I live in the Russian Federation, and it's a multinational country as we know. Well, uh, well, uh, there are lots of Muslims, uh, Christians, Orthodox Christians, and. Uh, well, since old times, uh, well, all um, the representatives of all uh, religious uh, religions, uh, well, uh, always lived peacefully here in this country. Uh, for example, there are um, Tatars; they are um, Muslims. Uh, there are lots of other republics, such as Dagestan, uh, well, Chechnya, uh, where the majority of the population, uh, well, are Muslims. Uh, well, uh, as for me, I, I think that it's the choice, <laughs> well, of uh, well of an individual uh, to choose the religion. Well, mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, the world uh, should be like mosaic. Well, all uh, the people should, well, cooperate with each other and live in peace. Well, no matter their well race, nation, religion, all are equal. Yeah, and when I think Russia, Lana, there's lots of diversity, like from a city to another, you see kind of different behavioral Sorry, I can't hear you perfectly well. Uh, well, can you speak a bit? Uh, maybe it's some problem with my uh, with my connection. I have a problem. Hi, Lana. Blanco. Uh, oh, yeah. Now it's turned off microphone. Sorry. Blanco, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, okay. So basically, I was talking about how your culture is so super diverse that from it differs from a city to another, and there are lots of traditional clothing, and there are lots of traditional food. So, what do you think of this globally? Uh, well, I think our culture is unique. Well, <laughs> we've got lots of uh, well traditions of. They are famous all over the world. We've got lots of traditional dishes, such as, well, maybe they are half Ukrainian, half Russian, such as, uh, let's say, borscht, uh, well, matryoshka. Well, I don't know what else to add here. Well, uh, and. Pilmeni, vareniki. Pilmeni, vareniki, yes. Rastolnik. <laughs> so many. Yeah, exactly. And to some extent, our, uh, well, our culture is similar to some other uh, Slavic uh, cultures. Yeah. And you know, when I've been first to the airport, I've seen some traditional clothing and I've seen it like it looked very similar to, uh, to Amazigh clothing. It looked quite like the, the Kabyle uh, dress. 
it looked quite similar to it. And I, okay, I did not make some researches about it, but I was like, oh, wait, like this, this is something that I've seen before. So cultures are quite connected sometimes, yes. I feel. Yeah. Uh, for example, in our churches, uh, the women should uh, the women should enter the churches, Orthodox churches, only wearing scarves, well, mm -hmm. and long skirts. Well, mm -hmm. unlike uh, Catholic, uh, uh, for example, uh, in Catholic churches, uh, the person, uh, I mean, the woman, can uh, visit uh, without any scarf on the head, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without wearing scarves. Whereas uh, in our churches uh, one should wear some mm -hmm. some scarf mm -hmm. also. maybe in this way we are a bit similar with the muslims <laughs> but only only in churches <laughs> okay thank you lana uh we'll move to blanco jenny blanco if you can hear me please turn on your microphone to speak hello good morning Hi. I, I, I appreciate you uh, that I am in this group and I would like to learn with you. I'll, I like to improve. And well, I'm from Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. and I have three, three children. I'm married. And in my country is beautiful. Is there there are volcano and lakes and it's very interesting. There are a lot of things to explore. And it's beautiful. Do you know Nicaragua? From where are you, Blanco? Jenny? Uh, could you repeat the claim, please? Where are you from, Jenny? Where are you from? I'm from Nicaragua. Oh, wow. Do you know? I will Google it. <laughs> in South America. It's a country in Central America. Central. Central America. Central. Yeah, Central yeah. America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Central America, yes. Yeah. Bienvenida. Uh, well, it, for me, it's great to be here with you. Thank you. I'm delighted. Thank I'm delighted. You. Because I think that uh, I want to learn with you. Uh, I, I have been heard you, and mm -hmm. you speak English very well. Uh, so, we, we we are uh, planning to make it in like to make another conference in Spanish in the future. So uh, maybe you would like to join and help people speaking Spanish about interesting topics. In Spanish. Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah, hello. yeah go ahead. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, well, uh, here, here, uh, my language is Spanish, mm -hmm. but I, I like to learn English. Mm -hmm. And since, since your country is in Central America, so uh, there may be some certain, I would say, uh, marriage between the, your country's culture and the American culture. So, is it true? What do you think of this? Well, the, the culture and custom here in Nicaragua and is uh, folklore, it's a uh, dance, it's a typical dance, it's a folklore, and uh, the typical food in Nicaragua is Nacatamal. Uh, in the gallo pinto cheese and 
in Merry Christmas or the people visit our family? And we we um we visit and help them to cook in a special dishes and then we ate together. Yeah, so there is an interesting exchange. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I will be asking you actually another question that's um, really important in 2020. You know, in the era of globalization, you see that there is a lot of marriages between cultures. So we have lots of multiculturalism that's being, I would say, uh, promoted as diversity. So what do you think the idea of keeping the authenticity of every culture? Like, for example, um, Sochi's culture is in, it's in Russia. It's very, very, very um, authentic and original and diverse. But with the globalization, there were some companies who started making the same traditional clothing as the tradition as, the, as the, the authentic ones, and they're not they're not the authentic ones. They're not made with the same uh, tissue. So there is a very very um, huge difference in quality. So what do you think globalization had? Uh, I would say like value the authenticity of, of the culture or not? Who wants to answer the question, please? Okay, I'll go for people who did not talk before. So we got a person whose name is Galaxy A10. Would you please turn your microphone? Hello? I think he can't hear us, so we'll move to Herjet from Cameroon. Could you please turn on your microphone? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm getting you clearly. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the question, sorry, I just came in, it's not been a while. Okay, the question is, how do you think the globalization is impacting the authenticity of cultures? Uh, in my own perspective, uh, I think uh, I'll just try to talk as far as my country is concerned. I don't know if it's very okay, if you're okay with that. Are you, hello? Yeah, I can hear you a bit. My connection is not really good. <laughs> so you're saying how has globalization affected our culture? No, I said like, how does globalization, the marriage between cultures, the multiculturalism of today, like immigration and the probably refugees, how do you think that this globalization will impact diversity and will impact the culture, the authenticity of the culture? Which means the originality uh, I of think the culture. Yeah, I think globalization uh, can really affect the culture positively. For me, it's a two-way, it's a two-way, uh, two-way answer, positively and negatively. I'll start uh, positively because with globalization, we learn from others. We learn some um, some positive things, like maybe clothing, like in Cameroon, for example. We dress like the Western, like the Western world. Meanwhile, when we were growing up, we never had that. But with globalization, we have the um, internet, we have the media and all that. We see those dresses, for example, which is part of the culture, and we try to adopt them, which when we put them on, we go for ceremonies and it's good. Then negatively, like uh, at first, before now in my country, for example, uh, this internet scam was not really um, pronounced like the way it is now. 
which is due to globalization, it was not, it was introduced also. I don't know the, the, how 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 um, realistic I could go, but I think when we we're growing up, when we we're much younger, it was it was very mild. We did not hear of all this calm and the rest. But it's what most youths nowadays involve themselves into. And it's dragging, it drags the name of, of, of even the country because most uh, uh, um, legit uh, Cameroonians who want to maybe enroll in maybe education out of Cameroon, like to further their studies, when they bring in their, their, their document, they are being cross checked and checked and checked again because of the fact that maybe they've heard about scam from Cameroon, from Cameroonians, and the rest. So, Globalization has a positive and negative impact in the culture. And also, there are some other bad cultures that uh, we, 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 uh, uh, we, we, we get as, as far as globalization, globalization is concerned. Because when you when we also look at maybe uh, uh, our, uh, let's say, let me just mostly use I'm very, very conversant with the idea of, of youths maybe and then nurturing their ideas of working in their country. Like in Cameroon, we have good we have good soils for agriculture. We can work, we can work in Africa in Cameroon here and export our things out of Cameroon to be bought, and then we grow our economy and then we get better and we improve ourselves. But most of us, most of the youths now want to just travel. Because they just feel that out there is better and they take the crooked way. Some of them go through the seas and they even lost their lives and all that. So I think globalization has both positive and negative ways. So that's what I can really please as of now. I don't know if I'm really on track, but... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Sarah? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. I just I have a question for Herjit. I think. Yeah, yeah but uh, yeah. carry on. I'll, I'll just keep it later. No, it's okay. It's okay. You go for it. Oh, is it fine? Uh, can you hear me? I'm sorry if I hear. I can't pronounce your name correctly. Is it Herjit? Uh. I don't know to whom you are speaking. It's Viraj on the line. So are you speaking? No, I'll, I, I'm speaking. Yeah, yeah, to the one that was speaking from Cameron. Sorry, I couldn't pronounce your name correctly. Can you hear Heget. me? Heget. Yes, Heget. Yes, I would love to ask you about. The name is Heget. Heget. Heget it is. All right. Um, well, I'd love to ask you about your native language and uh, your, like, um, uh, I'm not sure what language you speak right now in your country, and I've heard that uh, there is a language that it's already faded, like few people speak it. I'm not sure. I, I would love to know. All right. Uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah. In Cameroon, as of now, we have uh, two, basically, we have two um, languages that we use to communicate, that's the French and the English. Mm -hmm. But naturally, the French language is being dominated because we have just two English zones in Cameroon. We have the Southwest and the Northwest. Basically, I'm in Boya, in the Southwest region. But the other, we have 10 regions in Cameroon and uh, eight regions in Cameroon speak French. Two regions in Cameroon speak, which that's why we, we if, you, if you Google search it, you will hear of Anglophone and the Francophone. And if you Google search it, you will see discover that the two Anglophone regions, which is the north, Northwest and the Southwest, and the many eight regions are the Francophone zones. They speak French. So that's the name I'm, I'm, I'm of, the, I'm of the, the English zone. So my first language is, is English, but I speak little French or I can communicate with French too. Thank you so much. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Yasmin. Uh, now we'll move to Viraj. Okay, I think that it's time to finish the call. But uh, we'll, I would like to hear Viraj before finishing it. So hi, Viraj. Hello. Hi. What do you think of the impact of, global, of globalization on the authenticity of cultures? Yes, uh, first of all, uh, good evening, everyone. And my name is Viraj. I, I come a country with a variation 
of cultures, the Farangi of cultures, where we officially have 22 languages and we have like eight types of classical dances, which makes us too much variation, variation in diversity. So it helps in our economy too. Because mm -hmm. like, uh, tourism, the role of tourism in GDP of our country due to, due to culture and diversity, diversities is like 240 billion dollars every year. It can be mm -hmm. 40 billion dollars every year. So actually culture matters. And in, even in India, we have a kind of uh, herbal medicine culture, which is known as Ayurveda. So mm -hmm. almost we were able to control 5,500 5, cases of coronavirus to solve through Ayurveda. So this makes us different from others in terms of cultures and also helps to improve the economy of our country due to our culture. That's it, sir. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's yes. It, yes. Sir. Thank you so much uh, for your intervention. So guys, I think that we should uh, uh, call off the meeting, but before who would want to come in? Uh, Sarah, just before we wrap up our meeting, uh, I want to let you know that our next meeting will be either about the, the Creative Society again, since we had technical issues last time, or we we do uh, we talk about uh, journalism with Sabrine. So we okay. haven't decided yet. Yeah, maybe after one or two days, we will let you know through our uh, groups in Skype and WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Okay, to sum up, I would want to teach you uh, two words in my, in my, for my language, the language that exists in Algeria. So the first word is Yatekum Saha, it means thank you, it's in our Algerian slang. And the second word is Tenemir, that's in uh, the, the Kabyle language, it's also a language in Algeria. Thank you so much for coming here today. And I would want to say also that diversity connect people from different backgrounds and etc. We are different, but we have one core, which is humanism. And we're all humans and we must treat each other with tolerance, respect, love and humanism. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Thank you so pleasure. much, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Amazing conversation. Thank you. It was all. amazing, really. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.